who's preparing for a championship fight. This morning, Freddie Roach worked Tappy out and then apparently missed his scheduled flight here to Las Vegas. So Juco wor uh, works tonight without the trainer he's accustomed to in his corner. Ruben Gomez, the cut man, becomes the chief second in that corner. And George, that's got to be discouraging. It's, it's awful difficult because you don't know. You, you need your motor to kind of crank it, crank things up. You don't have the trainer. You don't know when, what and how to get started. So he's gonna have some problems at first, especially in the first couple of rounds, if the fight can last that long with this left jab keep popping in yeah, the top of the head. Mayweather is just really throwing a hard jab at Juco, landed five or six already. And Juco, who has been throwing in previous bouts upwards of 70 or 80 punches per round, won't approach that output number in this first round against Floyd Mayweather. It's hard to throw a lot of punches against a super fast opponent like Floyd. Floyd is, has a convenience. He loves to watch punches pass him by, make you miss. Can't seem to function without it. Hard left hook. You can see that Floyd Mayweather can do so much off the front foot. He jabs beautifully. He has a quick lead left hook. He can follow with right hands over the top. If Juco want to win this boxing match, he's kind of got he's got to get wild a little bit. You can't just stay right there on the standard boxing. Move your right foot a little closer to your left foot so that you can hit him with your right hand. Sometimes the right foot is too far away. It's going to make you farther away when you throw the right hand. That was a good left jab to the chest. Good Juco. Count, counter left hand by Juco. Just misses with the right hand over the top. Juco looks quite relaxed in there and is starting to get off a little bit now in the second half of the round. You have a fight to play in, you go into training camp for a tough fight, then all of a sudden they switch the opponents. That can really throw you off. So Mayweather's having to adjust a little bit too. Mayweather said he was in no way surprised that Gregorio Vargas dropped out of the bout. He said that when first he saw Vargas in a publicity uh, outing for the bout a couple of weeks ago, Vargas looked to him like he weighed 160 pounds. And he was thinking, how is this guy possibly going to fight me? Vargas was thinking the same thing at that time, guaranteed. <laughs> how am I going to fight this guy? Mayweather said at first he didn't even realize that Vargas was the opponent because he looked in no way like what an opponent for a 130-pound world championship fight ought to look at, uh, look like that short a period of time before the bout. Cautious, workmanlike first round for Floyd Mayweather Jr., Justin Juco. Too much respect for Mayweather in the first round. Wanted to see what he had, and so was hardly throwing that left jab. Let's see if he steps it up here. Mayweather with a quick snapping overhand right to start out round number two. And already looking, he's just waiting for the jab to come over the top. Mayweather. Juco pounding to the body with a wide right. Mayweather's trying to look to get in the pocket now. He's been outside enough. May would like to slip the punches and be a little closer to his opponent. That's what he's doing now. He's not jumping far away now. Little left hook to the body by Mayweather landed. That's when you can roll the punches when you stay in the pocket. When you jump far away, the guy can't hit you, but nor can you return the punch. And as you start to get closer to your opponent and try to set up farther inside, it's always good to pound him to the body a couple of times to take the aggressiveness away. Now, he's going to be very smart with body punches because he's fighting a quick guy. He reach down there too much, and he can get something else of So he'll use them selectively. Selectively. That's a great way to say it. Now, he's looking at just to get closer, closer, closer. When you do something, you got to look at your opponent's shoulders. Now, Juco's got some big shoulders for that weight class. It's not like he's not going to have something when he throws a punch. He's also showing more defense than we were led to believe. Uh, 
according to Jeff Mayweather, uh, who had sparred so often with him, that he had uh, told Floyd that he throws so many hard punches that you can time him, and he does have a lot of holes. So Juco here is perhaps uh, aware of that relationship between the uncle and the uh, nephew, and he is throwing fewer punches and being more resourceful. And maybe he's pacing himself that way, too, because he faded in the late rounds of his preceding bout, an 11th round TKO loss to Antonio Hernandez, in which Juco was leading on two scorecards at the time at which the fight was stopped. And so it's in his best interest to try to save something for the later rounds against Floyd, who, for his part, believes, based on what Uncle Jeff and Floyd Sr. have told him, that Juco will fade after a faster early pace. I think what has happened is like a guy duck hunting. He's just waiting. <laughs> You gotta wait, you can't hit anything. And you find yourself waiting too long. This guy's so fast, dynamic. And you think you're gonna miss, I'm gonna miss this, so I'm just gonna wait for a good shot. Right hand over the top lands for Juco. Second round, not a bad one. Did make it, it is. Yeah, Oscar did make it clear that, in his view, certain people are leaving the Delaware boat after this particular voyage. Part of his new transformation, he says he wants to cut cut his team down from about 20 to four. Tommy Real. Box numbers showing that Justin Juco is getting a little bit more comfortable. He only landed three punches in the first round, but landed 11 in round two and actually threw four more punches than Floyd Mayweather. Floyd doesn't try to throw 65, 70 punches around. He's pretty measured in his output. He's, he's seen the rewards of being a puncher, so he's, he believes that he can take you out any time. Good, good punch by Mayweather, just a little bit high. More and more, it looks as though that quick counter right hand over the top of Juco's jab is the primary item in the recipe for tonight. Kind of loads you a little bit. He doesn't do anything for a couple of minutes, and all of a sudden he unloads with something that shocks you. It makes you think you're slipping, but you're not slipping, you're hurt. <laughs> Mayweather blocking or partially blocking all of Juco's shots here. Juco glancingly lands the right hand over the top, but now, managed May to do a lot of damage, and then Mayweather lands the right hand counter. Mayweather's found a pocket now. He's not stepping and jumping back. He's getting closer. And that's what you don't want him want to happen. A Juco is best start moving and jabbing a bit more to throw him off rhythm. Ry uh, rhythm. And you saw Floyd step right up in Juco's face, wait for him to throw the left hand, and then pop the right. Yeah, well, the when top. that's happening to you, Juco now should start jabbing and moving out of the way to make him reestablish the pocket somewhere else. And step back a little bit and make him change. Juco can very well win. He got to think, he, I can win this thing, too. This is an opportunity. Sometimes you can get into a fight with a fast, classy guy like maybe start looking just like the audience, forgetting that you came here to win. hand counter over the top. Mayweather dropping and splitting his hands from time to time, try to invite Juco to come in. Juco best start moving around, do something, just to change things up, make Mayweather reach at him a little bit and miss. And that's exactly what Jeff Mayweather told his nephew that Juco would do, that he would do the same thing round after round, and he would give Floyd a chance to time him. 